then they would have known what is the price and how to launch it. Dean Gammon has moved on to only the series of new inventions. So he is a, he is a techie, he is a patient holder, he is an innovator, everything okay. But what went wrong is his lack of domain experience, lack of market research, market survey. He didn't do the thorough job. As in the previous case, you know, mentioned the mentor was constantly nagging, not, not a doable idea. So they went on being more and more thorough and they made a full proof platform. Concluding for a device that was said to have cost more than 100 million in research and development, it's impossible to call the segue anything but a really a bad idea. The technology was awesome. The world just wasn't ready to As I think you said that, you know, the people were not ready to accept it. Because he didn't do any test marketing, he didn't do, he just kept it a secret. They could, have, they could only sell 30,000 units against the forecast of several units. So, forget about $1 billion in sale, you know. I don't know if he did that, but I mean, he could easily license the platform for robotics in uh, manufacturer. Because, I mean, it solves the purpose of making a robot mobile. Uh, you know, it's a perfect. Where I mentioned in industries, it's a it's a blessing you know, to have the brand. Yeah. So he could have easily licensed it to the robotics industry. What he did is he pushed for the social cause, you know, for you and me. Now that was not relevant. Maybe it was relevant for uh, industries where you know there is a movement of the uh, the other yeah. product. The other product that I see that you know went down the same. Yeah, it is overconfidence. It is overconfidence. Everything cannot be steamed. 
jobs. He designs the product and tells you that this is what you get. Right? He has so many patents and so many jobs. He thought that you know this invention is going to be marvelous. With all the three big daddies behind him, he was very much overconfident. That's why, unlike the previous case where the inventor was behind them, you know, they're not not doable. This guy said everything is doable because he says one million, one billion dollars. This is going to be the fastest company who can generate one billion dollars. Now, what more do you want from a big big daddy? Yes. Yes. Any other comment? You want to wrap up so that I can give more time to Malik? Yeah, sure. Molly, you'll be ready. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have a presentation per se. No, no, whatever. Uh, one minute before you start, uh, another one. Right. Just want to make a few quick observations and sort of share some thoughts. The way the case study was presented, it says that it's a social problem as opposed to a technology problem. A, I have honest differences. Technology is not necessarily making it work. To make it useful, and therefore safety should be part of technology, and therefore it is a technology. That's why that. Uh, the second is the dilemma. Pitching it too high, there are certain things that you have to really get a lot of buy-in to be able to. So he faced the dilemma. This is a new concept. Unless this new concept is widely uh, excitedly accepted, you would not be able to create that momentum. Uh, even the road, you are very good at etc. On the other hand, uh, whenever you are doing technology, you need to build it slow. So there is this dilemma of new technology. When is to expect a new technology to be fit perfect as it leaves the factory? I mean, one is the laboratory, it's, 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 it's not good. You have to have a very slow start. And the third point is uh, <clears throat> when you have big people behind you, uh, you know, are saying it's like overconfident, but actually it is blind beside me. Complacency. Complacency is something which is like in the blind side, in the sense that you actually, uh, actually as an entrepreneur, you should not really worry whether people are putting money on you or not putting money. Are you creating value? And if you are creating value, you need to have a customer focus. Now, when you are most technologists, have a tendency, I am a technologist and I can prefer say anything about technologists. Technologists have a blind side that people should adapt to my technology rather than having a focus on the usability or the customer. So, in terms of not, not having empathy for your users, is the greatest danger that one can get into. And not having that empathy for user getting that greatest danger gets amplified when a lot of people are supporting. Because we think that you are. Yeah, anyone what Abhishek said, what Mr. Jai is saying, I think this is more uh, product based company rather than a solution based company. Uh, the need that they were fulfilling is still unclear. Yes, Malik, uh, you are talking now. So, yes. so, I just wanted to present a problem that uh, you know, we are working on in the company right now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is something that uh, we have been trying to sort of get around with. So, I just thought I would share this with you as well. Uh, it all starts with the fact that we have uh, we are just getting into the business of decorative paints. So the value proposition is very clear. Uh, today, uh, so I will compare my paint with you know, uh, say Asian paints Apex. That's a well known brand. Now my value proposition is I am going to give you a paint that has a better finish than Apex and it has 1.3 times the coverage. That means, if 
if you are going to get 100 square feet of coverage out of Apex, you are going to get 130 square feet of coverage out of this gate with a better finish. So, the problem is the distribution. The distribution uh, system for paints, you know, as it works, the dealer, uh, the dealer planting price for Apex would be somewhere in the vicinity of 4300 rupees for 20 liter can. Now, we bring it in at the same cost. So, cost to cost, our paint isn't too much more expensive than Apex. So, our dealer planting price is also, so our paint's name is Silver. We just call it Silver. So, we hope to use gold about that. So, we will also give it at approximately 4500 rupees dealer now the problem is Asian paints because they are such a dominant company and because their distribution system is so efficient, their dealers work at a 5% margin whereabouts. So if a dealer landing price is 4300 rupees, they will probably sell to the painter for 4700 rupees. We need, on the other hand, we are an unknown company, we, nobody knows about us, so we need a distribution uh, you know, sort of a system to push our product. We need to end up giving almost 22 percent to the dealer. That makes our paint very pricey. So finally, we end up at you know approximately 5500 rupees. We still think that is value for money because at the end of the day, you are getting 30 percent more coverage. You are getting a smaller finish, and it is the future a high opacity paint because if you think about it, it saves labor cost. As we go more and more into the future, it's the labor cost that's going to become much more expensive for square feet. Paint material cost. So we think that packing in more opacity into the can is a good idea. The product's been well received even at that price point. But it's taking a long time. It's taking time to convince people to you know convince painters to get used to sort of experiencing this product with such a high opacity, buying at a higher price, giving so much margin to the dealer. So it's it's a slow process. Now if I have invested in a paint. Uh, to manufacture paint, I want to move my capacity speed. So I want this to move faster. So another way that I could do it is that say I get 1.3 times the hiding power, I could I can easily you know dilute my paint down by 30%, reduce the price by 30% and bring it in cheaper than it is. So then what happens is I say okay instead of giving a much much better paint than it is, I give an apex equivalent paint at 30% the price, uh, or 70% the price. So then what happens is that I come in at you know, 3600 rupees dealer landing and then I still need to incentivize, uh, now I am equivalent. So at 3600 rupees I am equivalent to a product that a dealer buys at 4300 rupees. Same performance. So that is the question is do you stick with the high performance, higher price product and let the market slowly grow in that area or do you introduce another lower end range where you substantially down price compared to the competition and give the dealer you know, a lot of margin even at the lower end. And if you do that, do you still go through the distribution network? The dealer is a 22% of the margin. If I have direct sold this paint to the painters, you know, platforms like e-commerce are available, platforms like uh, you know, opening up your own shop is available, I can bypass the dealer and sell the painter at 3600 rupees. Now he's getting the same paint that he bought from the shop at 4700 rupees. He gets to buy at 3600 rupees. The only problem is if I go direct selling this lower end of the paint product, then I antagonize the dealer and distribution network. So, you know, the question is, is there a way around? Is there a way around where I can direct sell this second, you know, sort of, not the first line of paint, but the second line of paint without antagonizing the dealer distribution system? Or do I still bring it in through the dealer distribution system? Does it, should I even go for it? So, who's your, who's your team? Who's your target? Who's your target audience? Is it? Is target, it? See, the uh, generally the paint market is driven by the painter. So, so the painter has to be convinced to buy the paint. So, 
If you've seen the ads recently of Asian Pains and all this, it is usually considered a very cool thing even in movies for people to just take up the roller and start training themselves. Yeah. So it appeals to this TG also. The young generation, millennials, like you call it. So when you keep that as a TG, they don't give much food to the painter or to the dealer. Dealer doesn't want the picture class at all. We talk to the painter and ask him for advice, see which is a good painting. So then what he says makes a difference. But if I am the TG, in the previous case study, the first one, what the cool thing they did was, very simple thing, ethical marketing. They said we donate X amount to this guy. Now, the person who is at the end user perceives the product in a very different light. So, to an Oakley or anyone, you are like somewhere rather than just another guy who is coming. So, over here, if you do some sort of marketing which is a cool element or some element which appeals to this TG, you might be able to cut through the brand cost. The other part is the cost of branding and advertising. You might be able to cut through that with a See, the, 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 the thing is though that if you say 95% of the paint money is driven by the painter, people literally say, boss, you know, you are paint printing, you just charge it by the square feet and uh, you bring your paint to do your paper, it doesn't matter. People, some people specify that I want Asian or I want Persian or I want different, but a lot of times people don't even specify the paint. They say, Mirko, I want a paint to in this many rupees per square feet. Right? So, the target audience for us is not the do-it-yourself people at all because that is such a small segment of the market, it doesn't even matter at all. Absolutely. Right? The market so, you are not appealing only to that target audience, you are making those target audience like you rightly said, some of them say that I want Asian things. So, you make them say that they want your paint, that is for that TG. The second TG is the painters, which you don't dilute the 1.3 times coverage part. In event, what you do is you sell it online. When you sell it online, to the painters, it's a it's it's a proposition. So that's, that's that's something that I thought about. That how about I create an app, right, where they can buy the paint and deliver to their doorstep, the painter. Right. But then that again is creating a parallel distribution system where one day, see, like I am not only really selling paint, I am selling what cooking products, I am selling cements, I am selling adhesives to these dealers. I don't want to antagonize them. What you know, he will come and tell me that boss, you are direct selling. Then what is the point of me? or I carry any of your products. So that's the dilemma really. So that there is no other way around it from where I see it. Meaning, meaning no, if you are to either go to the distribute the dealers or this is all against them. them. If you go through them you pay that 22 percent which you can't afford. Right. So is there a way of soft stepping them? Ah, correct. So that's that's you know, what I wanted to um, I think a few things um, in the last one year I uh, I renovated my house, I made my factory um, I did a couple other civil projects. Um, not once did I ask my painter ki aap kaun sa paint use kar rahe ho. All I told him was, aapke isab se kaun sa achcha hai, achcha lagna chahiye. Um, I think having said that, uh, your product uh, paint is more of B2B and not B2C. What I feel is uh, in B2B products, uh, it is very very price sensitive. And it is your dealers who you have to convince. Now for a dealer, if he is making 5% or 2% from Asian paints compared to 20% in uh, silver, then I think he is, de he is definitely motivated so to sell your product. I had a counter with that. Uh, I uh, in my personally sat at the paint shop for two days observing the guy. And not once after knowing that this paint is 22% uh, margin, not once was he willing to, you know, pitch it, you know, he's not willing to lift his hand to sell something that takes effort to sell, right? So essentially, he is taking 22% to be a stockist. That's all he's doing. So by giving that much margin to the paint dealer, it, it, it doesn't buy your salesman. That's the problem. So why do you, why should I give him 22%? That's my, you know, whole. Well, it's my question is like, by giving him that 22%, could he actually sell it? That's the goal. That's the first right. If you don't give 22%, you want to stop giving Exactly. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, if you give 22%, right, you, you grow your volume and till it reaches a point where you sufficiently sell that entire product. Right. Okay. So, so I'll take this one more question. Uh, what about the other side? Like, uh, if you are selling uh, paint to the dealer, right, and uh, you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and you are selling the paint to the dealer, right, and
you say that okay, huh? from today on, I will sell it online. And that is the day I think you will make, from that day onwards, you will make the most money. I think even selling it at 22%, like you might not uh, make enough money, but the day you say that okay, from today, you are again, you are again facing backlash from the investors.